this meeting, okay? Allow me to share my screen now and So can you hear my screen now? Yeah. Just a moment. I think my my sound is not working very well. Can you can you uh, just me check here because my sound is not working. Just check here. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work for Mo either. So. <laughs> oh, I think just a, just a moment. I think my sound is not working very well. Let me share here. I'm tracking here uh, sound. Okay. I don't know for, for this reason. I, I play again. And if you are listening the song, you, the, the sound, you can just f uh, do a sign for me, okay? To, to be aware, okay? It's not working. my friends thanks so much for being here once once again in this sabbath school class and as this is an unusual day because i think they are you guys are missing more here and center but we can do this uh without them but uh may god be with us today okay and as we know as we are now doing our sabbath school class is at 5 p.m., 5 o'clock on afternoon. And please, now you can mute your microphone during the videos and the songs and while there are other people doing this, uh, their tasks and talking. But please join us uh, with your voice, with your participation, even unmute, okay? And do we have a volunteer to read this Bible verse here on the screen? Do we have a, vol a volunteer? Ken, can? Yeah, hi. Yes, please. Thank you, Doctor <coughs> Doctor Luis. No, this thing took place as an example for us that we might not desire evils as they did. Yes, thank you, Doctor. And what do you do? You guys think? Uh, what what is uh, what is this text saying about about who who did these evil uh, things? Do you know, guys? Who? Yeah, who? About him? Who? About? So, sorry, professor. Who? 
Uh, oh, they usually uh, say this. Yes, 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 right. But about uh, who, who are doing evil uh, things that is mentioned in this text, who did these bad things, evil things? The I Israel. Some of, the, some of the people in in Moses' time is what it exactly. was talking about. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Yes. And we can see in this picture some events, some uh, bad situations they they had to face because of their bad decisions, right? So mm -hmm. they felt in, in bad things because of the evil that were in their hearts, okay? And now we are going to sing a song. Please sing with your heart and your soul, okay? Yeah. 
In the church says, Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus, for his salvation on the cross. And may we allow Jesus and our Lord Savior to put away our sinful nature. And he covers our sins with love and grace. Amen. So continue here. Now is the time our to to the prayer, our first prayer, and I invite Dr. Luis Carlos to pray for us. Dear Father, we thanks for the opportunity to uh, join with uh, our brother, uh, and the, I ask. You, we ask for the Holy Spirit to, uh, uh, in order that we, uh, we understand the word and the practice in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Carlos, Luis Carlos. And uh, we have just an announcement. We have our podcast. Uh, Believes in Asp School podcast with Mo Asir or our teacher Mo. And for those who ask me that are going to the church uh, in person, Sabbath School, and we are missing Mo Asir, we can join him in our podcast, Sabbath School podcast, Believes in Asp. So it's a time for us to be in contact with the the lesson with the Bible, study the Bible together. And if you, you can do in the morning, you can do on the morning, in the morning, or if you cannot, you can do at night or at the time you can do it, do it, please. Uh, study the Bible, study the lesson. It's a blessing for us. And now, opa, just a moment. And now is a special moment. Now is the time of mission, talk about mission. And today we have a special friend, a special friend, Kayla, our sister. And I had the, the opportunity to, to, met, to meet uh, Kayla here uh, in the Sabbath School online class. And also uh, in, a, in a meeting with people from a project of Bible. And for me, it's a pleasure to have Kayla he here with us. So Kayla, the time is yours. 
Okay, thank you. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Uh, is the sound fine? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, teacher Mo uh, asked me to tell some story about my mission trip or about something that I am doing today. But I, I choose to tell us a little and short story about the time we have lived in Bolivia. Uh, I was in a pastoral family and here in Brazil, we need to change to, to move from a place to another place uh, frequently. And uh, I had a friend, my neighbor, that uh, saw it, knew it, and she asked me, wow, why are you, uh, why are you moving to a place in another place uh, so frequently? Uh, is that bad? I, I asked her, no, it's fine to me. Okay, but if the church uh, calls, call, calls you to go, call you to go to Bolivia, what would you do? Well, I, I told her, well, I would do, I would go there. And at night, I was thinking about my answer. And I, I was worried, a little bit worried about what I have said. And I prayed about it. I, I prayed, talked to God. Well, it would be a pleasure. Uh, I don't know if I can go. It would be fine to my kids to go there. But, well, you, you will. Uh, what you, you will, I will do. So the time passed. And uh, some years later, uh, we received an invitation to go to Bolivia. And I have forgotten, I had forgotten that moment. And I said, well, what are we going to do? Because I knew Bolivia. Uh, uh, Bolivia is the poorest country here in South America. And I had three kids. Well, what I am going to do right now? But suddenly, uh, after some days thinking about it, I remembered that moment with my neighbor, my friend, and that I had said, well, I would go. And then I, I thought, well, I am going to honor my answer from that moment until now. Okay, I, I agreed to go to Bolivia. And we went to Bolivia and we have lived there for a little bit more than six years. And it was a very, a very good pleasure to live there. And we had many, many good experiences there. Once we, we were invited to go to build a church in the middle of the jungle. And we, with the people uh, at the conference. And we went in a bus with the, these volunteers workers. And there to go to the jungle, inside the jungle, we had to pass uh, to some police, some guards and they had some weapons well very big weapons to go inside the jungle because they had many cocaine plantations there and we went there 
to build the church with the kids too. And it was a very good experience to be there. And nearby, we had some uh, cocaine plantations. It's rare, rare, but they need to know about Jesus too. And that was a very good uh, place to live. Now, I, because we have learned the Spanish uh, at the hospital that I work, we receive a lot of Bolivian people there. And to me, it's a big pleasure to speak in Spanish with them because many times they don't speak a very good Portuguese and they are in a very special moment. To be in a hospital, it's not too easy to be there. It's, it's difficult to, to be in need of some care. And if I can speak in Spanish with them, I think I can bring to them some comfort and they can be more relaxed being there with us. And it's, it's a part of my mission to take a special care of these people here too in Brazil. I don't have a picture because we didn't have a cellular phone uh, too easy there to take this picture, but uh, it's uh, the photo can be making your imagination. It was a little church, but I didn't found my place in building with the tijolos, or what the word? The tijolos, uh, bricks, uh, the bricks. Yeah, but I worked at the garden, building a garden, a garden around the church. That was my my job there. Amen, Kayla. What what story? Amazing. I love it. Uh, I I, I never imagined that you lived in Bolivia. I didn't know that. So yes, I think everybody here agree with me that it was a great story, and we. I, I think I, I was thought, I was thinking here that when you you told to your neighbor that you were oh I would go to Bolivia because you you would uh, you would imagine it that God you <laughs> invite you to go there oh <laughs> and I think he, you did a great job I am sure that you did a great job and congratulations for your volunteer for your work there and I think you in the heaven you 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 see how uh, you helped people there that you couldn't imagine. You you don't know exactly now, but in heaven you see the fruits of your work, many fruits. Okay, thank you, thank you. I, I hope to see it. Amen. Bless. Just share my screen now again. Uh, excuse me. Uh, do you have? Uh, are you in touch with the people in in the Bolivia Church? With the people that you you had been there, no. Well, with the people there, I have touch. I still I have uh, having been in touch with them there in Bolivia, but here uh, sometimes I went sometimes at the Bolivian church or uh, Spanish church, not Bolivian church, Spanish church, but uh, I work with Bolivian people at the hospital, usually. Great, great. Okay, and thank now, you. thank you. And now is the time for the special song, special music. And I don't know if Pedro, Pedro is here with us. Yes, Pedro is here. Yes. Just a moment. Okay, just to preparing you guys uh, to know Pedro, to get to know Pedro. Pedro is a, a little boy, eight years old boy. Yes. yes. Oh, I mean, hello, Pedro. Present yourself. Hello, my name is Peter. 
I'm eight. I will play it. I will play a song, My Light, My Light House. The name of the song is My Light House, is it? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay, go ahead. God bless you. Amazing. Very good. Well done. Uh, thank I'm you. I'm a proud. I'm a proud of you, Peter. I'm a proud of you. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Amen. Beautiful. I I was not I, I didn't know, but I was presenting, still presenting them, <laughs> trying to copy the lyrics, but I, it didn't work. But praise the Lord, Peter. Amazing. I know this song in Portuguese and even in English as well. And it's amazing. And great Thank job. You. And great job, Anna, for your son. Keep going. Oh, do keep, go keep doing this with your son and keep in contact with this, the, so the music. And I know that I think he, he's going to be a, a great musician. Thank you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So let me share again my screen. Okay. And now is our, our exercise, Bible exercise. And who is invited of doing this for us? Let me check here. Uh, Professor Ida. Professor Ida. Are you there, Professor? Okay, I am ready. Are you ready? Yeah. So, guys, take your Bibles for okay. our Bible exercise, Professor. Everyone, raise your Bible. Yes, where is your Bible, guys? Let me see here. Okay. Adelaide, Fabio Souza, please take your Bibles. J. Avila and Grace, please. Uh, turn on your camera and share and show to us your Bible, if possible, okay? And our lead, our professor Ida, our brother, will lead us in this Bible exercise. So, professor, it's your turn. Go ahead. Okay. Everyone, where is your Bible? This is my Bible. This is my Bible. Bible. Are you read it? I will read it. Read it. Are you practicing? Are you practicing? Are you sharing? Are you sharing? By the grace of God. 
by, by the, the grace, grace of God. God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Professor. Professor Ira, wow. thank you so much. And we put this in practice, not just uh, exercise, but uh, practice in our life, okay? And now is our special moment, the special moment of our meeting, our Sabbath school, is the moment that we can uh, share the lesson and share our thoughts about what, what we have studied during the, the week. So today, our teacher is gonna be Teresa. And the title of this lesson was Longing for More. So Teresa is our time. Thanks so much for accepting the invitation to, to lead us in this moment. Okay. Um, can you kind of watch to see if anybody else joins? I've been inviting people in. Um, Padu, keep an eye on the, and if anybody else comes late, who knows? Oh, okay, let's have prayer to start. Does somebody want to volunteer to have a opening prayer for our lesson? Just we need the Holy Spirit to help us guide us here, don't we? Does anybody want to do that? Okay, Oceano. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful time you gave us this afternoon. We want to study your word. We want your presence to be with us. That can open our hearts, our minds, that we can understand your word according to your will. Please, this church, virtual church, we have been looking for your presence. And we believe that you are with us right now. From that, we want to thank you, Lord, for everything else. In Jesus' name we pray. And use also your daughter, Teresa, that she can explain what you want us to listen, to hear. In Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, this was kind of a difficult lesson to, to figure out what we should be learning from it. But it was just, there wasn't a, a, a firm focus on anything. But let me share my screen here and then we'll talk about some of these. Share. Okay. Uh, from current slide. Okay, but there's more. <laughs> and you ask yourself, okay, longing for more. More what? You know? <laughs> and of course, I'm sure they meant, meant it to be more rest in Christ. That's what we've been studying all quarter, isn't it? So um, we're always longing for more rest, aren't we? That's not a hard thing to, to figure out, I suppose. We've already looked at the memory text, 1 Corinthians 10, 6. And we looked at um, pretty, a pretty long passage there in, in 1 Corinthians 10, and also in Hebrews 4 this time. So um, let's, let's start with 1 Corinthians chapter 10 something in the New Testament, but it brings out some stories here from the Old Testament, as we'll see. Somebody want to read verses one to four? And we'll look at some of these examples that it mentioned in our memory text there. First Corinthians 10, one to four. We'll start with those. Anybody have it? Can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear I'm you. testing a new, am I really loud? It's a new headset. It sounds about right to me. Go okay. ahead, Kim. Then I'll, then I'll do it. Now, I would not have you ignorant, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank. Am I in the right thing? That's right. The spiritual right. rock that followed them and the rock was Christ. Okay, so it talked about several things in that passage. Um, what do these examples mean? What are they talking about? You know, if you don't know where these stories came from, you're not going to really understand what it's talking about and, and how it might even pertain to us, because this is written in the, the New Testament, so it's meant for New Testament Christians. 
you know, like us Christians. So what does it mean when it's they were under the cloud? Can someone tell us what that story was about? I remember that when they were in the desert, uh, the Lord provided to them the cloud to protect them for this, uh, the sun that was very, very high and very hot in those times in Egypt. So they were protected by the, the clouds during the, the, the day, okay, I think. Yeah. What else did the cloud do for them? It's protection for, for the Lord. Lord's protection. A Lord's care for them. Yeah. It kind of guided them too, didn't it? To, to show where they should go. Yes. So that they were under the cloud. Are we, are we under the cloud? Sometimes we think of being under a cloud as being under a stormy cloud, but <laughs> this is a very friendly cloud, isn't it? <laughs> we want to be under the cloud when it's talking about God. Okay, what about in verse two? It said, baptized into Moses. And I thought we were always, I've always heard we were baptized into Christ, but does this, is this really, was this really in the Bible? We read that. It said, it said in verse two there, they were baptized into Moses. So how do you, how do you explain that? In what way were they baptized into Moses? I mean, I'm sure. Theresa. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Explanation. <laughs> Uh, uh, I think it's a symbolism because uh, uh, with Moses, with Moses' directions, they went through the sea. The, uh, the Red Sea was opened and they walked through the, uh, the sea with mm -hmm. the leadership from uh, Moses, right? Maybe it was the sim quote unquote symbolism of the baptism. They would have a new, new life after being set free from the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. Teresa, yes, my Bible says, and uh, that explains to me, uh, they were all baptized as followers of Moses. They were following Moses in this mm -hmm. project, maybe to be baptized into Moses. Into Moses. In a way, they were. They even went through the water, didn't they? When they went through the Red Sea. In a way, it was going through the waters there too, the waters of baptism. We can relate to that a little bit. Well, what about eating the same spiritual food? What kind of food did they have and, and what was spiritual about it, do you think? Well, they had maybe some speech from God, directly from God they could see his glory mm -hmm. on the top of the mountain. And the food, I'm thinking of the manna. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking was that, that the manna was the manna. And it's like a gift from God that just like his spiritual word is a gift. So there were some spiritual, they, they gained spiritually from having it, didn't they? It was just another evidence that God was taking care of them and that he was instructing them because it, it, it instructed them in how the Sabbath was kept. You know, they got twice as much of it on the ground on Friday and nothing on Sabbath, but it kept over on Sabbath. So he was using it not just um, as a sign of his uh, providence of providing them with something, but also to help instruct them and show them how his rest can best be gotten on the Sabbath day. So they lost uh, their, a lot of the um, Sabbath through their years of slavery, I guess. And then it talked about the spiritual drink and that spiritual rock. Um, what were those supposed to be symbols of or referenced to? What are they symbols of? Uh, Rock is the uh, symbol of Christ, I think. Yes. yes. That's that's uh, he had, there is even a verse somewhere. Isn't it say mm -hmm. there? The um, symbol of Christ. And that rock was Christ. He said right there in verse four that Kim just read. So uh, he was yeah. the rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and 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 I imagine I was reading uh, 
the chapter here. And I can imagine uh, uh, those people walking to the promised land, to the promised land, and uh, they uh, they were going uh, in the same uh, with the same feeling. God was instructing them, mm -hmm. and but something on the on the way, something didn't work out, right? But uh, at the beginning of the chapter, uh, the Bible says that uh, they were together, right? They mm -hmm. had the same uh, the same thoughts. They were doing the same thing, eating in the same uh, manner spiritual manna and drinking the the spiritual the spiritual drink right mm -hmm. but uh then something didn't work not christ's problem but uh with the people with all those right. people right that's uh, I'm, some, I can some people yeah, yeah some people benefited from from these symbols and and some people did not uh the the symbol of the the drink that was the Christ is the living water too. So a lot of these things were pointing to the Messiah, these symbols. Yeah, let's let's see what some of these people did then. Let's read in First Corinthians the next few verses, uh, verses five to eleven. Right there where Kim was reading a minute ago. We'll just just continue reading there. Five to eleven. Does anybody else want to read it or should we get Kim to do it again? Try Can out I? your Can I? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Verse five. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered over the desert. Now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in pagan revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. In one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test the Lord as some of them did and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples and were written down, down as warning for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. I like that version. That was, that was really a good one there. Um, so let me look at these, some of these mistakes they made then. The symbols, they all had the same instruction, the same cloud over them. But some of them made these mistakes and they were pretty, pretty bad ones, I guess. The idolatry, of course, they brought that with them from Egypt, but um, they continued in it, it seems like some of them did. Sexual immorality, they tested God. In what ways did they test God? It mentioned that there. How do we test God? Anybody have any ideas? Well, what about when Jesus was tested by, well, he was in the uh, tested by Satan. And then when it, Satan came to him and wanted him to uh, throw himself over the cliff. And didn't he say this would be, you don't tempt God. You don't, <laughs> would that be a, wouldn't be a very good test, would it? They tested him. Let's see how far we can get away with this guy. You know, <laughs> they were they complained to him. Do we still make these mistakes? Anybody have anything they want to say about that? Do we still commit some of these mistakes today? At, you know, as a whole, the whole generation that we're living in, we're still struggling with them, aren't we? No, sadly, <laughs> we're not looking at the right at the examples that he's given us all right let's look now at, at monday's lesson it talked about ritual and sacri sacrifices and this is not something that we all enjoy looking at nobody likes to look at these innocent and think about these innocent animals that were killed it really doesn't appeal to us much these days to think about that but but why were they important symbols um it gave us some verses there in leviticus to look at and this one question about being a female lamb, 
think about that a little bit because I have no idea what the answer to that question is. I just wondered, why was it supposed to be a, a female lamb that they were to sacrifice for the sin offering? Let's look at Leviticus um, chapter four there. Verses 32 to 35, and I'll go ahead and read it just to save a little bit of time here, but you can still be going to it. It said there that if he brings a lamb as his sin offering, he shall bring a female without blemish. Then he shall lay his hand on the head of the sin offering and kill it as a sin offering to the place where they kill the burnt offering. The priest shall take some of the blood, and there's an important thing to look at too, the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of the burnt offering and pour all the remaining blood at the base of the altar. He shall remove all its fat as the fat of the lamb is removed from the sacrifice of the peace offering. Then the priest shall burn it on the altar according to the offerings made by fire to the Lord. So the priest shall make atonement. And here's an important sentence. So the priest shall make atonement for his sin that he has committed and it shall be forgiven him. So, first of all, does anybody know why it would be a female lamb? Some of you religion teachers out there maybe might have an answer to that. I have no clue about it. <laughs> you have no clue? <laughs> maybe you didn't even think about it, but... <laughs> uh, I wondered if the female... Uh, animals in their flock were of more value than the male ones. I mean, they they were bearing uh, lambs all all every year. So maybe you know if they're taking one without blemish, you you want to give God your best, and and that might have just been why it was a female. Then um, I have no idea either, but probably not that important. <laughs> but but what do you think the blood? What did the blood stand for? It kind of mentioned it there. Uh, when I think about the blood, I think about the the life. The life, life. is in the blood. Life is, is in the blood. So I think. Yes. About it. And we find those verses. I think in Genesis nine four it mentions that, and and even in Leviticus seventeen eleven. If you want to go to those, but. The blood stood for life. So in the blood being spilled, somebody was, this lamb was giving its life, wasn't it? For the person's sin. Um, did the Israelites know the meaning of the blood as they did these sacrifices? I think they did know, at least at first they knew. Over time, I think it just kind of got to be the rituals got to, to be too ritual. It got to be <laughs> just something you do without thinking about it. But of course, they, there, there was a lot of meaning in them, wasn't there? And all the sacrifices that they did. Um, let's look at, oh, here's something from the New Testament then that, that talks about sacrifices too. Let's, somebody else uh, want to read First Peter 1. 18 to 21. First Peter 1, 18 to 21. May I? Okay. Let's do 18. Uh, for you know what was bad to set you free from the worthless manner of life handed down by your ancestors. It was not something that can be destroyed, such as silver or gold. It was the costly sacrifice of Christ, who was like a lamb without defect or flaw. He had been chosen by God before the creation of the world and was revealed in these last days for your sake. Through him, you believe in God who raised him from death and gave him glory. And so your faith 
and hope are fixed on God. Okay, I like that version too. So how does the, la uh, the life and death enhance our study of the sacrificial system in the Old Testament? You know, we have kind of an advantage because we, we know about the life and death of Jesus, don't we? And so it's kind of easy for us to, to look at these Old Testament uh, symbols and rituals and understand what they exactly what they were pointing to. And yet so many times Christians don't want to, you know, go to the Old Testament that much. You know, they, they just think it, it's not really needed. But why do you think we still need to study these symbols, the meanings of these symbols? What can they the do reason, for us? The reason, yeah. I like the, the, the meaning of the female lamb. I have never thought about it. I have ever seen about no defect because some pastors uh, speech to us, uh, our offering needs to be without defect. And it's a uh, honest money. Uh, it's, we need to be honest. Um, so about the female, it was very interesting to me because with the female, you can have another lamb and it was valuable, uh -huh. uh, very valuable to have a lamb, a female lamb to yes, and remain with the animals you need. Yes, and if I may, mm -hmm. if I may, um, the, 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 that's included. Uh, that that uh, because of the female lamb was given as an offering for anybody. If, if you sinned and you went to the temple, you gave a female lamb. If you're a leader, it was a male lamb. If it was a king, it was a male lamb. If it was a major sin, it was a male lamb. It was the, Jesus is the male lamb, the lamb of God. And he died for all of our sins. And for, for the leaders, for our major, major sins that we commit by accident, not mm -hmm. major sins we cannot commit on purpose. But the female lamb is what you brought when, uh, if you, you didn't have anything else. And it was the... It, it was something that people didn't want to give because they wanted to keep the female lambs. And they, mm -hmm. uh, they, they only need one male lamb, but they needed a dozen female lambs. And mm -hmm. so it, it was something of value to them. And then it was one year old. And so uh, it, it was older than the lamb that you had the picture of, but uh, it was something that was valuable. It was something that, that you wanted to keep uh, that would be for me. For, it could be for meat, but you usually use the male lambs for meat. And uh, so it, it, was, it was something of value. Yes. But, uh, the hard, female harder lamb. to give it up. I, was, I wondered if it may be just harder to give it up. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry about that. That's fine. I was, I was wondering if the answer to that question it bothered me. It, if, Kayla, you must have been thinking about it too there. <laughs> yeah. Um, to me, it kind of almost puts an equal value on the female and the male like you say sometimes it was the male sometimes it was female doesn't make any difference maybe to god do you think <laughs> that's just another thought about it there but why do you think we still need to study these symbols that are in the old testament can they still do something for us and our understanding of of god well I, I think that when we study these old testament symbols they give us a deeper picture of christ and a deeper picture of what he actually has done for us. They do. And what he's going to do, because then Revelation, when you look at the book of Revelation, which is about our future, there's a lot of symbols in there that we would have no clue what they're talking about if we didn't um, understand them from the Old Testament. So it is important to, to know these symbols. It's even important to know the good and the bad examples. like. <laughs> like we learned earlier there too. Okay, we've got, we've got to move on here, but Hebrews 4, um, just the first two verses, let's look at that. And 
because that was the other major passage we looked at this time was in Hebrews 4, verses 1 to 2. Somebody want to read it? Me, I. Okay. So, in the new uh, international version says, Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the gospel preached to us, just as they did, but the message they heard was of no value to them, because those who heard did not combine with, with faith. So what is needed then for the gospel to bring us rest? We can, can we just hear the gospel? Is that all we need? What do we need to go along with it? Go along. That, last, go along. that last part you read there, I think, I do. Yes. What, says, yes, not being mixed with faith. So we need to have faith, don't we? Yes, exactly. Yeah, we have to believe what the gospel says. Mm hmm um, now, just a few verses after that, verses 10 and 11, it talked about rest leading to disobedience. Uh-oh. <laughs> Another reason to have rest, huh? Verses 10 and 11, Hebrews 4. You have a comment? Oh, yes. Go ahead. I think it is, uh, it's beautiful, this question, what is needed of the gospel to bring us rest. The first thing we need to understand that uh, what does mean gospel and what does gospel doesn't mean? And this is, will help us to understand why or what is the need for the gospel to bring us rest. The gospel, when we go to Hebrew language, it does mean the, the good news. What does mean good news? Good news, it is not me advice, right? There is some, for example, you can give me advice. It is my choice if I want to accept your advice or no. But when we say that gospel, good news, it is something I need. What does mean gospel? What does mean good news? Good news it is what Jesus did or what Jesus has done in your life, in my life. Mm -hmm. And this is will help us to understand why or what is needed for a gospel to bring us rest. This rest we're talking about, I think it is so beautiful. All this quality we're talking about, rest in Jesus. It means that we can find maybe some rest in some places, but the rest we're talking about is only Jesus can give us. Mm -hmm. Emotional, as we have been facing this, from this pandemic, it is something we need to understand. We need to accept that all of us, we need rest in Jesus. And also in the book of Hebrews, for all of you, I think so, just read it. It is talking about Sabbath, right? For the people of God to have this rest. But uh, I think that Teresa, it is the, 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 the good point we need to understand. I think that's all of us here, maybe. Now, important, all of us are defenses of seven days. The big deal, it is not that we don't know that the Sabbath is a day of rest, but how, how, I think this is the deal, how? Because mm -hmm. sometimes we just thinking about, I can't, I cannot do this, I cannot do this, I cannot do this, I cannot do this. But I think that we need to go back to the Bible because only the Bible can bring this light, right? For the gospel to bring us rest, God in Jesus, he brought the rest that only in Jesus we can find this rest. That's true. So true there, Oceano. I think we, one of the things we need, the first thing was faith. Now, when we look at verses 10 and 11, we see that we need something else. We need obedience, don't we? He says, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall, fall according to the same example of disobedience so we need to have faith we need to be obedient um let's go on to wednesday then 
And it talks about hardening, not your hearts. So here's another thing that will give us rest. Verse seven, we don't have to go anywhere. We're right there already. And I'm just going to read it because we're getting a little short on time probably. Again, he designates a certain day saying in David, today, after such a long time as it has been said, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. And that verse in Psalms 95 that I have listed here, 95, 7 to 11. If somebody's already got it, we can go ahead and read. But I think it's going to say basically the same thing. What does it say there? Uh, can I read? Go ahead. 95, 7 to 8, uh, good news version. He is our Lord, he is our Lord God, who are the people he cares for, the flock for which he provides. Listen today to what he says. Um, don't be stubborn, as your ancestors were at Mirabah, uh, as they were that day in the desert at Massah. They, there, they put me to the test and tried me, although they had seen what I did for them. For 40 years, I was disguised uh, with those people. I said, how disloyal they are. They refused to obey my commandments. I was angry and made a solemn promise. You will never enter the land where I would have given you rest. Okay, so they are, they were disobedient again, but it was because they had hardened their hearts. Um, and notice in both of those verses that we read, the word today. So I think that's important because it still stands. Today, we still harden our hearts many times. And that's one of the other reasons why we um, aren't finding God's rest. So we need to have soft hearts, don't we? Um, conquering a heavenly city, we'll just go over this briefly, but I think it's, we know who the people of God are, don't we? Galatians 3.29 tells us that it's those that are in Christ are Abraham's seed. And what kind of rest is available to God's people today? And do you think that includes a Sabbath rest? Why do you think it does? If, if, let's read Hebrews 4, 9, and 10, because it does make it sound pretty clear that they're talking about the Sabbath rest <clears throat> and that it will be important all through the time. Verses 9 and 10 there. Somebody have it already? May I? Okay. As it is, <clears throat> however... There is still remains, remains for God's people a rest, like God's resting on the seventh day. For those who receive that rest, which God promised, will rest from their own work, just as God rested from his. So it's, it's talking about the Sabbath rest, then, isn't it? They're just like God rested, so it must mean the Sabbath. So I think we did get something important out of this lesson, although it was a little bit hard to pick things out, but ways to have more rest. Since we're longing for more, what were some of those ways? We need to have faith, a faith-filled heart. We need to have an obedient heart, and we need to have a soft, loving heart, don't we? How does the Sabbath help us to develop that? How is it a sign that we have this kind of heart a heart that's like God's. What do you think the Sabbath does? Or why is it for, important for, for us? For, for me, uh, the Sabbath is important because it reminds me that I have a creator that created not just me, but the, this world, this nature, the place that I live. And he provided me everything that I need. And mm -hmm. he loves me too. And he loves me so much. So... And I know I think the Sabbath is and uh, the moment, the special moments, the special day that I can have a relationship with my creator and my savior and my redeemer as well. 
in order to keep the Sabbath, we do have to have faith, don't we? <laughs> we have to have, we have to be obedient to the fourth commandment when we have to have a soft, loving heart too. So the Sabbath is kind of a sign that we have all those things. If we're keeping the Sabbath as well as these other things, then that's a good sign that we belong to God. It's a, it's a glimpse what's to come, right, Teresa? It's a what? A glimpse. A glimpse of, yes, of what it's like to come to him. Yeah. And we always yeah. long for more. We long to get to heaven, don't we? That's what I think. Yeah, the I know. Is, of course. We, yeah. Yeah. And the closer we come to having these, these rests that he's provided for us here, the closer we will to be to having the full rest. Well, I think that was all my sharing of the screen I could need to do here. And <laughs> does anybody else have any other comments they'd like to make about how the lesson affected you? Do you see it in any different way after where I presented it? it like I say, it was a little bit hard to, to narrow it down, but <laughs> you may have, I'm sure you probably got other things than I did too. <laughs> does anybody want to add anything? Yes, uh, just one, one comment. Uh, so the, all of the, the uh, this rituals, they were all pointed to Christ, right? And yeah. so this, the blood of the goats and, and so they, they, they don't, uh, they are not valuable anymore, right? But uh, it's, uh, I've seen here in, in um, Hebrews 10, yeah, to four, uh, verse four, that it's not possible that the, the blood uh, of goats and, and can goats and bulls take this uh, take sin. So Christ is is our is with us now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now we right. But the old and, and the New Testament, they are always uh, they are connected to each other. Mm -hmm. we, we see that not, there is a connection. There is. It's not really important for us to actually do these sacrifices like it talked about in there, but we, we do it does it is valuable to study them because like you say that we can we can learn from them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well that was it. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. So let's see. Should I ask somebody to have closing prayer, Badu, or did you have something else? I think he, Oceano, would do a com um, comment. Go ahead, Oceano. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Teres, also, and Badu. I think it is, uh, it's sweet for all of us to understand that Sabbath, it is a, a, it's a gift that God gave us as his children. But the, the most important thing that when we understand that the Sabbath is a blessing, it's not a, a curse. When we leave the Sabbath according to God's will. This is, I think, that is the, 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 the importance of this quarter we have been talking about rest. But some weeks until now, we have just been talking specific about the Sabbath. Why? A lot of, of us, we keep having this difficult how to keep Sabbath. Right, how to keep Sabbath. But just to go back to the Bible, God has told everything else. Mm -hmm. How the, is Sabbath need to be kept? Because when we keep Sabbath according to God's will, God, it is so blessed. Mm -hmm. We will understand how Sabbath is so sweet in our family, around our in our workplace, in our neighborhood. People will be so excited to. to to be together with us because they will see how sweet Sabbath is. But when we don't know how to keep Sabbath, it will be cursed. And people will be afraid to be together with us. Oh, these people, they don't have a happy life. And it is there's who keep Sabbath say, I don't do anything on Sabbath. I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. But when we understand we will we will have there is thousand and a million of things that we can do on Sabbath. This is will make Sabbath holy. A and delight. Sweet. Yes. A delight. Forget, yes. Yes, a delight. Of course, Teresa, I agree with you. Don't forget that the Sabbath, we don't need to do our will, mm -hmm. but to do the will of God. 
and the will of God is the best. Right? It's, it's the only, the way, only way to find true rest, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. This is I want to have. <laughs> okay. Amen. Thank you, Seno. Thank you, Teresa, for the blessed lesson that you shared to us. And everybody that uh, comment had said something here uh, and shared your thoughts, your ideas here to us. Uh, this is the, the main point. We need to share and need to talk together here because it's a moment that we can do this. So thanks so much for everybody that uh, has joined us during this meeting. And for Kayla that uh, presented her mission in Bolivia. Thank you also for Anna and Peter, her son, the little boy that played uh, piano here to us. And everybody that can and everyone that has uh, joined us today. And for we finish uh, our class, I will share again the screen. And we, we will sing together a lovely song, a blessed song that we have sing, sang here during this online class. And the goodness of the goodness of God. So let us sing it together. Mute your microphone, but sing aloud in your house, in your home. And I know that God is listening to us and he is very happy with our song. Okay. Let us sing together. Oops. Sorry. For your mercy never failed me, and all my years I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay in my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God.
I love the song. I love the lyrics and the message that uh, this song tells us that the love of God of God is running after us. Even we we don't go to Jesus. Jesus come to us through the Holy Spirit and through your His love. He is running after us to save us, to give our give us life, our real life that. That is amazing. So, Teresa, can you do the fret, the last prayer to us? Yeah, yes, I can. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the things we learned this week from your word. Help us always to remember to have faith in you, in your guidance. Have Be obedient to your word. And most of all, to be loving to all those around us. We know we can find rest when we have a heart like yours. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. So thank amen. you guys for this wonderful time here together. And it's good to see all of you guys. I, there are many people that I, I didn't know yet because I come back to the presidential, to the in-person class. And there are new people here for me even for me. So Linda, that, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna mention, I think Linda is my sister. Yes, she's, Linda. She's been, here yes. Before. she's been here before, but she had a hard time getting a, on this time. Yes, for me, it's a new person, new people, because I, I don't know yeah. many people here. Yeah. So thank you, Linda. Who else is here? There is any visitor here for the very first time? No? But J. Avila, it's good to see J. Avila again. For me, it's uh, uh, remitting. I don't know how to say that, but. Yeah, but, nice nice to see you again, Badu. Yeah, nice. it's a long time I didn't see you. Yeah, because you, uh, we've missed you a lot in the online lessons. Yes, but I try to come back here next Sabbath or even the couple Sabbaths ahead. Okay, Kim, nice, very it's very conventional. It's in the afternoon. It's, uh, yes, can, I, I can join both in the person class and in, in, in the online class too. Yeah, have a nice week there. Have a nice weekend there, everybody. Bless, God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. Bye 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 bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye guys. Bye bye.